Hello, calculus kids. This is Mr. Bean. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about several things. Uh, and in fact, I'm, to be honest, I'm a little nervous about this lesson because there are five or six different things that we need to talk about today. If we looked at every one of them individually, they're all very simple ideas. But when you put it all together, sometimes it might be a little confusing to get this all at once. Uh, but we've been having to wait to learn these specific rules that you're going to see right here. These three rules are going to help us to be able to do some other things that we've been waiting to do until this point in the year. So let's start off with how do you take the derivative of a constant? So the derivative of C, any constant, is equal to zero. Now what I mean by that is that if we have a function that is just some constant, let's say y equals 2, well think about what that graph is. The graph of y equals 2 is a flat line up here at 2. What's the slope of this line? The slope of it is 0. So no matter what we say is a constant, y equals 5021, the derivative of that is going to be 0. So that's maybe a good idea to write this down, just so you can see. The derivative of any single number is just a zero. Now, that one thing that will trick kids is if they see something like this, y equals uh, pi, or y equals e squared, or something like that. These are numbers. Pi and e represent numbers. And so they are constants and they're derivatives. Even if they have an exponent, the derivative is still going to be zero. So don't get tricked by those things in your problems. All right, constant multiple. A constant multiple means we have something that you here, I'm going to have something that you're taking the derivative of, I'm just calling it you, but you have a number in front of it. We'll call that number a c. So when you do c times something, the derivative is just the derivative of that thing that you're doing times the c in front. Easiest example would be if we had y equals, let's just say 3x squared. So you, we know from the power rule that that is just going to give us the derivative would be 3 times the derivative of x squared is just 2x. So then this is just going to give us y prime equals 6x. All right, real simple. So the 3 is there. You still treat it the exact same way. The 2 comes down in front. And now it's going to be a 3 times the 2 and then x to the first power subtract 1. Uh, one other thing with a constant multiple, maybe off on the side of your notes over here, you could write this one down, because this seems to trick kids up. If I had y equals x to the, let's say, fifth power, uh, but it's all over 3, sometimes that's hard to understand how do I do the derivative of that one? What's going on here? Well, if you rewrite it so that it looks like this, I pull that 3 dividing by 3 to the front and make it 1 third x to the fifth. If you pull that out, then you can see it's actually just a constant multiple, where you have a c right in front of it here with a one-third. So then the derivative of that would be y equals five-thirds x to the fourth. So that's a good example maybe for the left side of your notes there to write down. Okay, and then the last one, if you take the derivative of something plus something else, that is just the derivative of that something plus the derivative of the something else. And I say plus or minus because it's the same rule, or you could say subtraction. You minus v would be the derivative of u minus the derivative of v. This one's actually really simple. I'll show you what I mean here. Just if you have a bunch of different terms, you can just take each term's derivative separately. So let's do this together. First one. So this is what I mean. You have one, two, three different terms. So we're just going to take each of these terms' derivative individually. Uh, but you can do it all in one step. So I'm going to rewrite this. Notice it doesn't say y prime or dy dx, it just says y equals. So I'm going to rewrite this because then I can see a little bit easier here. So this is going to be negative 5x to the negative 1 plus 6. Now I will take the derivative. So we'll say dy dx, or you could say y prime, whichever you prefer. dy dx equals 4x, so the derivative of the first term. Now I do the derivative of the next term. So the negative 1 will come down. So negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 and then x to the negative 2, and then the derivative of 6 is 0. That's nothing there. And so then we rewrite it and get our final answer. dy dx is equal to 4x plus 5 over x squared. There's our answer. All right, next one. Let's rewrite this. So it's y equals, notice there's no derivative, it's just y still, 8x to the 1 half minus and then this is, I'm going to rewrite as 1 third x to the sixth, just so you can see that there's a constant multiple here, that the th dividing by 3 can get pulled out, and then plus 2 pi to the fifth. All right, derivative time, so I'll go y prime, 
equals the one half comes down. So one half times eight is just gonna be four. X to the negative one half. And then the six comes down here. So one third times six is going to be minus two x to the fifth power, subtract one. And then this one, be careful, the five does not come down. It's not 10 pi to the fourth, because this is a constant. That whole thing is a constant, so its derivative is zero. And then we can rewrite our final answer. So we get four over the square root of x minus two x to the fifth, and there's the derivative. And just a reminder, the derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line. That's the whole idea of this. So that is now actually covering everything that we just needed to cover. It covers the, th the three main rules that we needed to do introduce. So now we're going to use those rules to cover some things that we haven't really been able to talk to about much in depth. So the first thing is horizontal tangent lines. When does a function have a horizontal tangent line? Now remember horizontal, flat line like this. When does that occur? So if you look at this graph, if I were to draw, draw a bunch of tangent lines, just tiny little tangent lines, when is it that you get a flat line. So all of these tiny little tangent lines all the way across. So a flat line would be right here, would have a flat tangent, horizontal tangent line, and then right here as well. Okay, those are tangents. And so it's actually going to happen when you have a maximum or a minimum. That's where they occur. That's a really important concept for stuff we're going to do throughout the year to find maxims, maximum or minimum of things. So when we want to know where do we have a horizontal tangent line. It's really saying when is the derivative equal to zero because the slope must equal zero. So let's do that with this one. Take the derivative equals. Now this is not, this fork squared plus seven X minus 13. That's not this graph. Okay. That is not this graph. I'm just, I have this written there so I could show you that. Okay. So don't get that confused. This is just some simple parabola opening up because it's positive in front. Okay. So derivative is eight X plus seven. And then we want to take the derivative, which represents the slope and figure out when does that slope equal zero. And then if you solve it, you'll end up with negative seven eighths. So that is the X value when we have a horizontal tangent line, or in this case, right there, that's the minimum point. The X value is a negative seven eighths. It's not the y value, but we can just plug in the negative seven eighths to figure out the y value. Okay, so kind of cool. It gives you, a, helps you figure out a max or a min, a potential for a max or a min. Uh, but since I knew this was a parabola, it was obvious that that was a minimum. All right, so that's how you find horizontal tangent lines. Next, normal lines. Some of you may remember this from geometry. A normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. Perpendicular to the tangent line. So if we want to find an equation of the normal line, we need to figure out something about the, the uh, tangent line. So let's see, at what point at x equals three? So here's x equals three, right at that point. So uh, I'm gonna draw a tangent line that goes something like this. So there I have a tangent line. Yes, I know it's not perfect. Just give me a break, it's, it's hard here. So I have a tangent line, supposed to be a tangent line, and I want to figure out the normal line, which would be perpendicular to that. So it's gonna come off something across like this, however that is. Uh, so let's figure out what that equation is. So the first thing is I need that coordinate point. So that coordinate point looks to be three comma negative three. So if I, if, in other words, if I plug in a three, does it spit out a negative three? It does, okay, just save yourself the work of plugging in the three. It does, I made it perfectly to work out that way. Uh, next, we need to figure out the slope of the tangent line. That's the derivative. So the derivative f prime of x is equal to, use the power rule and everything for each of these terms, three x squared minus, the two comes down, eight x plus, now what about this one? The derivative of x, the one comes down, it's just one, and then x to the zero, so that's just a one, that's easy. And the derivative of three is zero. Okay, so there's the derivative. Now plug in f prime of three, and we get three squared is nine times three is 27, minus eight times three is 24 plus one. 27 minus 24 is three plus one, four. Okay, this is the slope of the tangent line not the normal line. Please don't get those confused. If it asks for the normal line, what we need to do is take this thing and do the negative reciprocal. Okay, negative reciprocal. Reciprocal. Okay, if you forgot that, write it down. This 
is the m we want to use for the normal line, the slope. All right, so here we go. y minus, what's the y value? Negative 3, so I'll say y plus 3, equals the slope, which is negative 1 fourth, and then x minus the x value, which was a 3. All right, there's the equation. So negative 1 4, so it's at that point, the slope's negative 1 4, so I could go up 1 this way over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1 over 1, 2, 3, off the grid here, and hard to do this with my bin, but it looks something like that. There's the perpendicular line. It would form a 90 degree angle. That's the normal line. Okay, cool. Woo. So now in this lesson, you're going to be doing both the tangent lines and the normal lines for the practice of both of them. All right, staying with me. I know this is a lot of stuff we're talking about. And now we have to do differentiability. Back a few lessons ago, I think it was 2.4, we talked about differentiability and continuity, but we couldn't do it with these piecewise functions. And this is what you're going to see on the AP exam is stuff like this. You'll see this in a lot of tests this year, uh, mastery checks and so forth, where you have to find out, is this piecewise function differentiable? If it's differentiable, it must be continuous, right? Because remember, differentiable just means you have a nice, smooth curve. There's no sharp corners or anything like that. So it also has to be continuous. So the first thing is, let's see if this is continuous. Take the first piece, 5x squared plus 3x plus 2, and say that it equals the other piece, negative 7x minus 3. These two pieces must equal each other when x is negative 1. So negative 1 squared times 5 is 5. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and then plus 2 equals. Here I get a negative 1 is your x times negative 7. That's a positive 7 minus 3. Uh, so this is going to be 4 equals 4. All right, good news. Check. It is continuous. If this had not been continuous, we could stop and say, nope, it's not differentiable. There's no reason to keep going and look for anything else. If it's not continuous, it cannot be differentiable. Okay, that's an important thing to make a note of. Next up. Are the derivatives of the two pieces equal to each other? In other words, maybe this graph comes together like this and then has a sharp corner like that. So right there at x equals negative 1 are the pieces having a nice smooth shape to it. And the way you know that is if the derivatives are equal to each other. So let's take the derivative of the first piece, which is 10x plus 3. And then that's got to equal the derivative of the second piece. The derivative of the second piece is just negative 7. You can see I couldn't teach you this earlier because you didn't know all these shortcuts. Now that you know the shortcuts, it's much easier. Okay, so now do these two pieces equal each other at an x value of negative 1? So 10 times negative 1 plus 3 equals negative 7. And then yes, negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 equals negative 7. So the answer is yes, and that is showing your work of how you got there. If it was not continuous, then you say it's not differentiable. And then if the two derivatives don't equal to each other, it's also not differentiable. Now, the last type of problem, which is very similar to what we just did, and that is sometimes they'll give you variables in here of numbers that we don't know what they are, and you got to figure out what they are. So, But it's the same idea. So you just take, are the two pieces continuous? So I'm going to take this first piece, but I'm going to plug in the 3 right away. So 3 squared minus a times 3 plus 2, and then it has to equal a 3 plus B. So I did the first piece equaling the second piece with the 3 plugged in. Let's simplify this up a bit. 9 minus 3A plus 2 equals 3 plus B. Um, let's see here. 9 plus 2 is 11, and then subtract the 3 over. We're going to get 8 minus 3A equals B. All right, I just cleaned this up. That's all I have so far. That doesn't tell me like anything. I don't know what A or B is. So now I go to the differentiable part. So this is the continuity, now differentiable. So the derivative of the first piece is going to be 2x minus a, because a is a number. I just don't know what the number is. a. And then plus 2 is not there, because that's the derivative of 2 is 0. And then it must equal the derivative of this piece. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of b is 0. It's nothing. All right, now let's plug in the 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus a equals 1. Sometimes on these problems, you might have the b that's already in here. And if you did, then you would have two equations. You'd have this equation, and you have this equation. And you just use systems of equations from Algebra 1. You use something like substitution or elimination. I prefer substitution. It's usually a little easier for these. Just kind of depends. So let's solve for a. That equals negative 5. 
a equals positive five. We can, so we know what a is now, plug that in here. We get a minus three times five, it's gonna be 15. And then eight minus 15 is negative seven. So there's my B. So I have A equals five, B equals negative seven. And if those are the two numbers that get plugged in here, this would be a nice, smooth, differentiable function. Okay, you made it through. That one was a little bit long, lots of material we covered. Hopefully each one of those little things, if you break it down, won't be too hard for you. So rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in the next lesson.